All right, some more stuff about bonding. So you might be asking yourself, when does bonding occur? You know, I have some atoms, you know, when when is it likely that they will, or how likely is it that they will bond? So bonding occurs if two or more atoms have similar energies or s similar sizes and energies and they overlap. These energies overlap. So, you know, if I had some sort of some sort of energies here, this is for atom A, and this is atom B. These two these two overlap pretty well. If I had atom A and then atom C was way up here, you know, there's no there's no overlap here. There's hardly any overlap. So the A and C bond is less likely to occur than A and B bond. I like to think things in simple terms, so you know this this helps me view this. Hopefully it helps you as well. Therefore, what we can deduce from this is that higher bond strengths correspond to similar sized and overlapping energies. Uh, one example of this, uh, I believe lithium fluoride, I think, and also lithium hydride. These have, these have similar sizes and overlap, and so their bond strengths are, are pretty high. And this one too, I believe. So they have similar sizes and they overlap in energy, kind of like you can see here. Similar overlap, more likely to bond. All right. Now, what if we have a heteronuclear combination? such as, for example, lithium hydride. The lower energy parent orbital will get a larger coefficient, meaning the electrons will be there more often. So, lithium hydrogen. Hydrogen has the lower energy, and it is the, you know, one of the contributing atoms here. So it, as the lower energy parent, will get more of the electrons. More of the electrons from lithium will want to go down to fill these, and you know, even even though they both have you know, two electrons, this is the, this is what it actually looks like. More of them will be going, and as you can see here, you can imagine this being the the electron density more dense on the hydrogen side, even though both of them have two electrons, 1s configuration, two electrons, 1s. Another interesting uh, experimentally observed uh, bonding concept is uh, pi back bonding. This is especially fascinating in organometallics, which I highly recommend. This happens when you have a metal, n plus seeking to fill its d orbitals. So pi back bonding is when metals seek to fill d orbitals. Now this is this presents some counterintuitive ideas. So metals when they when they when they bond they they, they bind to ligands, you know, really common example, you know, would be EDTA. I think, if I remember correctly, can can bind to, to six ligands. Now, when a metal binds to a ligand, one a common ligand is, for example, CO. This is what the structure looks like when a metal binds to CO. Because of pi back bonding, you get a counterintuitive dipole on this ligand. Now, these have similar electronegativities. Oxygen is a little bit more electronegative. So you would think that this would get the negative charge and this would get the positive dipole charge. But this does not happen. What actually happens is this. 
you get a negative dipole on carbon and a positive dipole on oxygen. Now that is pretty crazy, right? But it, it makes sense when you draw this out. Carbon's contributing two electrons, oxygen's contributing four. So oxygen is losing, it's essentially losing four electrons when it's going to share it to fill these states. And when this happens and it binds to the metal, so here's the metal, here's the carbon, here's the oxygen, the d orbitals of the metal and, th and these orbitals from the pi bonding from the pi ungarata bonding orbitals on the, on the carbon these two orbitals are in sync so the electrons will flow from the oxygen through the carbon and to the metal because the metal overall is positive so that's the driving force leaving the oxygen deprived of electrons and the carbon relatively rich with electrons. So that's where these bonding orbitals tie in with an interesting concept like pi back bonding. This has a lot of interesting applications in, uh, in organic metallics and uh, I recommend this course again. Uh, and just a uh, unrelated side note, the hartree fock approximation deviates when spin orbital coupling occurs and there's a relativity. Uh, this I can also explain later.